people from that committee to be on this committee, and now we're down to two. Uh, or is that right? Just down to two. Yes. Right. Yeah. Okay. Um, and then we also had another resignation, who I think was an was an at large member, um, and I would think that we give the staff latitude to go back to the pool or the appointments committee to go back to the pool. Um, I think there were several applicants that didn't get added to the committee that had applied to yeah, the other can committee. Yeah, take whatever you guys want to do and I can just let the appointments committee know your, your wishes and have them follow up, so. Yeah, so the woman who resigned, she kind of pegged herself in her resignation email as a, a, a mom, uh, somebody who had children in the school system, yeah. that, that type of angle. So yeah. maybe they could look to see if they could fill the role that at least she saw herself as filling on the committee. Could we look at two at large and um, assuming we're not going to get anyone from the previous, but even if we did, can we go over? I don't know. It's a good question. Was it was the committee full to the specs? Uh, yes, we were. So we have the two, we just have the two openings, the ad hoc previous and then the at large. Okay. But if you're asking, can they consider two having yeah. a first choice and a second choice? If, yeah. If the ad hoc doesn't, then yeah. make that recommendation if that's what you. Yeah. Right. Because I think, you know, another two or three meetings go by, then they, I just don't want them to feel like there's that far behind. Yeah. Okay. Um, item three is the election of a recording clerk so that Todd doesn't have to do the minutes. And can that, does that have to be a committee member or can that be, um, could that possibly be somebody who's ex officio, kind of a non voting person? I think it can be anybody. Like, so for me, I go back and listen to the recording and try to get it down. So I'm, I'm just making work assignments and then going back and listening. So I think yeah. it can be anybody. Okay. Um, does anybody volunteer at all to do that? <laughs> we have the chair and the vice chair over here, and you're going to have to run some meetings because, especially if we end up on Thursdays, because I'm going to definitely be missing some Thursday meetings. Okay. Um, that's where we end up on so that. I did a pass. You get a pass. And Karen and I play tag team on one of these ones, so I may run up in the area. Okay. All right. That's my excuse anyway. Yeah. Is this something that's a a burden for you or your designee on staff, Todd, to possibly do? No, at this point, I would say no. Once we get into, like, again, having the recordings and if we're continuing this hybrid, then we can just go back and do it after the fact. So, okay. And I'll just, like I said, on my agenda, I'm just keeping the high level things that as far as assignments. Yeah. Okay. So I'll leave it as a TBD. Um, that's a tough position to fill. Every board I've ever been on is nobody wants to do their minutes. <laughs> I lose track. It's like yeah. I never do a scoreboard in basketball. You know, so I'm watching everything going on. So yeah. 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 Um, so all right, so that's on the agenda later. I'll leave that for now. Um, the Utah uh, homework assignments were to review the um, the previous ad hoc committee's report. Um, and the and the accompanying uh, slide deck, which I didn't get a chance to do because I, I'm sure Todd sent it to us and I missed it. Um, so I, I didn't get a chance to do that. I did go through the Barry Dunn uh, Community Center Feasibility Report, which was released on March 3rd, 2020 in, in pretty great detail. Um, and, I, and I think there were, I'm gonna give everybody an opportunity to talk about what they, what they found, but I'll just start us off here. Um, Two things that really jumped out at me is how old the town is in terms of the population shift, like the percentage of people who were 55 and older is a tremendous, tremendous mm -hmm. uh, group of, of population and active users of a community center. And the other one that really jumped out at me was how few uh, active community center using adults they project us to have from that 25 to, what was it? Or was it 18 to 35, I think was the category, something like that. But it basically was young, young parents, right? So, and the same thing with the, with school age kids. Like once kids got to school, they weren't, they were more involved in school activities and less be less users of the community center, maybe using the community center through school programs, obviously. But um those two things really kind of jumped out at me as as uh, the percentage of population in town that is in that young adult, young parent age group. Um, maybe it's a a more affluent town, it's more expensive to live here. I'm not sure what drives that demographic, but um, the data that was in here was was pretty telling to me in that respect. I welcome anybody else to chime in and what they thought as they read through it. 
I spent a bit of time going through all of them. Um, and I I had worked very closely with Barry Dunn um, on that feasibility study the last time around. Um, I also took some time just to talk to people I know in town this time. Um, and at the end of the day, it's hard to find someone who says they don't want a community center in Scarborough. I mean, I think we all, or most people agree, it's a, it would just be a great addition. Um, but what I felt in here, I felt at the time, and I felt again in the past 10 days since we met, is that just overly concerned about how to pay for it. And so that's, to me, that is what I feel like my responsibility on this committee is, is, is uh, like, how can we get creative about the financial part of it and make it so that people want to have a community center and feel that it's an affordable thing to have. So that, those two dynamics, yep, I want it, nope, I don't want to pay for it, are consistent throughout all the reports. In some, to some extent, then we pay for it. Mm -hmm. To some extent, I think that's a really interesting point. The um, the ability of community services, and I know this isn't just about community services, but the ability of community services to be significantly self funded um, is dramatic. And I would think with the right facilities and the right, and I don't know, I'm using the lexicon right about programs and services. I know you had talked yeah, about programs those, and activities. Programs and activities. So. Uh, you're going to have to educate us all on that again, so we so make sure to get it right. Um, but having having the having the appropriate programs to enable yourself to fill the needs and fill the wants, yeah. but also be able to mo monetize it and yeah. sustain the the building. Um, you know, obviously, you have capital outlay and bonds and things like that. They're in inevitable, I guess, yeah. in, in some respect, and it's going to have to go to the voters to be approved. Yeah. But it's it's unique. It's very different from a school project mm -hmm. or for that matter, a library project or something where they have the ability to really have a significant revenue center as a component of the of, of the facility. Clarifying question. Okay. Yeah. Um, when you're hearing, was it, was it about the the construction cost or the operation then paying to go there afterwards? Because those are kind of separate, two different, distinct, yeah. distinct things. Um, it's a, that's a great question, Todd. I think it's both in there because when you look at the, the very same page that says, you know, community center is, is what they want more than anything, their biggest concern is taxes. Mm -hmm. right. And so I think, you know, I think you're asking a, a fairly sophisticated question that's not all people would be able to think through to that point. They just feel, oh, construction, building, here we go again. Mm -hmm. I'm gonna get hit in the tax bill again. And so I I just, we have to be really cognizant and aware of that. Like, yeah, people really want this. It's, why wouldn't we? It's awesome. Yeah. Um, but I just think we have to be very aware of the financial I think, it's, I think it's the most important thing of the whole yeah. piece. And I think that's where we struggled a little bit when we were making the previous presentation because, you know, we never got to the point of pictures or design or seeing what it looked like. Exactly. And, and most yeah. people, I know me, I'm looking at what's in it for me. So I can say, yes, I want it. And the value of how much it is, I can't tell you until I know what's in it. And so all of our questions were about what you want. I think that's the role of this committee is yeah. to kind of help frame up UTL's work in the programming and then around the activity side, um, because then they'll... Here she was... Oh, oh, sorry. I'm sorry. Thank you. No, thank you. I'm sorry, I didn't mean to interrupt you. Yeah, admit. Thank well, you. I guess I'm on the other side of the table next time. I think... I, I think that's a great point, Todd, is that we at the end, we kind of, which was coming first, the chicken or the egg. I know, you know, we did talk about um, like renting it to swim team pools, to swim teams and all that. And it, it was a little bit behind my question last week, like what exactly will the, is it UTL? UTL, yeah. UTL be helping us with, because I do think that's really important is how we can monetize that. Yeah. So, I mean, in there, if you had a chance to kind of look through, if you did, I'll just give you the snapshot. There, again, their homework was really about us looking at the data we already have on programming, spaces that are in the center. Yeah. And then through the report, it talks about activities and most of the activities that we at Human Therapy Services 
community services haven't been able to touch to the aquatic side, which when you look back, it's the number one and two item pools on the agenda. And most people are going out of town for that service. So they're taking that dollars somewhere else. Yeah. Um, and so that's that was their kind of first homework assignment. Their second homework assignment, which you know will come down the road, is you know looking at site and that kind of cost and build. Um, but ultimately, what they'll help us with, along with Weston and Sampson, along with balloting, they'll do once you guys decide on a program shape to start and activities and volume, then they'll start designing a building, and then they'll bring you back the work that you kind of did before was. Okay, based on what you're asking for today, and it could be different in six months, nine months, whatever this process leads, that here's what it's going to cost to build. Here's what it's going to cost to operate. And here's the potential revenue on the choices you guys have made to give them on size and function. Mm -hmm. And then um, that can kind of go like this, where you know, you as a board will have a committee will have to decide on their 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 questions. They'll come back and say, okay, guys, you want a 12 lane pool. And I'm making this up totally, but that costs five million dollars to build and it costs a million dollars to operate, and you'll make eight hundred thousand dollars in revenue, right? Mm -hmm. So you're already two hundred in the hole. Yeah. Or they'll say if you consider a eight lane pool, it costs you seven hundred thousand dollars to build and you'll make you know, uh, $600,000 in revenue. So you're only a hundred grand in the hole. So those kind of choices of what it is, um, they'll give you those kind of choices to make along the way because that's building costs, that's square footage and that's operational costs, that's which great. ultimately comes back to, Barry Dunn did some recommendations in there, how much it's going to cost a family in Scarborough. And that's really what at the end, do we have something that the people in Scarborough will pay to go? Yeah. And um some things in a building are going to i mean you don't recoup all your senior costs in a space like that you know um but you do have the different types of membership choices that you guys will get to weigh in on um you know family adult couple young youth i mean all those are choices along the way that was worked on in the past one that dictates what this looks like um we kind of touched base a little bit when we were talking about schedule last meeting about that first December kind of presentation. And really that's them getting your feedback yeah. and putting something together to then hold that first public meeting to get input on all the things you might've already heard or saying that, you know, I'm really concerned that that pool is too big. Like we need it smaller because that's a big cost center or, hey, you know, Dennis couldn't join us tonight. He's got a family emergency, he might show up, but he was talking about the gyms at the school last time. Mm. And, you know, I, I didn't, hopefully I didn't poo poo Dennis's thought, but the concern there is that they're not big spaces and you can't use them during the day. So they're really not spaces for, you know, the majority of the programming time for Scarborough when you talk about early meetings or activities, that's not accessible. So, mm -hmm. you know, when is accessible and sizing things appropriately are choices that they'll guide you through. Um, you know, and again, once you guys set your frequency schedule, then UTL can give you that kind of timeline of what okay. talking about. So okay. if that answers mm -hmm. no it's it's really help I mean it, it's really helpful and, and I'm I I'm excited to be at a point where we can get more creative about it. Um you know it, with our with our survey last time 92 percent of the respondents said they they'd be happy to pay to have something. So it's not that people no one is willing to pay anything. I don't need to suggest that, but we've got to find that intersection absolutely yeah if, yeah I, I had a because i'm whole, new to this process i did spend a lot of time reviewing that in detail but I, I just i come back to the the affordability um i think people will support if it's here i don't think the 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 membership fees were that bad it's my initial reaction coming on top of the referendum that's coming here in two months is then my first reaction is is Scarborough willing to support two hundred million dollars worth of instruction if the schools are one sixty and the and the community center is forty or thirty or Absolutely. whatever the number is. Um, quite frankly, I have my I have my concerns that that's that that's going to be supported. 
even even though yeah like you say everybody wants it but nobody wants to pay for it mm -hmm. um and um, so those were were some of the concerns i i wasn't clear i, I think i understand now that that the 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 downs proposal is not on the is not on the board. so that's that's gone by this by the wayside um so that um, and and again i'm not i'm not as vested in the downs being the downtown um uh, i took a walk around here and today and, and was looking at different Location undeveloped or underdeveloped pieces of property, and, and some of those were were highlighted the uh, the tennis courts and the ice skating rink. But um, it just seemed to me that that this is the the this is the location preferable. It would be for me uh, as far as now. Yes, there's a there's a growing population in the downs. Um, there's no question about that, but uh, uh, I, I'm personally I'm glad to hear that the downs is not that proposal just didn't seem to be just didn't seem to be right. If, if they wanted to develop their facility, then let them develop their facility. But uh, um, I, I was I was just a little a little concerned about that. Uh, I also looked at some of the distribution of the of the population and, and wondering uh, how things have changed in the like, three years now since since those data were were developed whether there's any update the, the master plan that was just done and improved in may has the latest demographics it was on that link so that's that's got the latest updated kind of numbers so uh, and I, I guess the other thing that I, and I understand that revenue is is an important, but in reading the very done report when they were talking about the pool, if that was used for competition uh, of schools, is the amount of time that <clears throat> that pool would be offline for the community if if they're blocking two day events that are. 10, six hours or eight hours or 10 hours at a back. Um, in, in my mind, that, that, that doesn't, that has a, that has, there's a downside to that. And, and that's kind of where, without getting too overloaded last meeting, as Patrick and I talked about it afterwards a little bit, is that this, there's a lot of information there, and there was everything on that project was specifically, there was a lot of specific in that charge. And as Patrick said there, I think during the meeting, is that, that was about making the most money and fitting that need. And that group really was big on the competitive swim side of the piece. And so um, that doesn't, when you look at the survey stuff, what people want, that doesn't relate to it unless you had a mega pool separate of everything that comes in the rec side of a leisure pool to your point. And there's ways to design that. Um, I, I kind of, I, I totally agree with you on the, you know, the political angle of things, you know, at the costs and and will it float and when 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 would it go to the voters and all that kind of stuff. I think we should, as a committee, maybe should marginalize those thoughts because that's not really what we're here for. We're here at the will of the council to to set if if we were going to build a community center, what would it look like? What types of I'm gonna get it right programs and activities would we have in that facility? Right. So forget about how it gets paid for, where it is necessarily. Maybe we'll get into that at some point. I'm not sure that's kind of an, op an option for us to look at maybe, but but it's more about if a facility were to come to the town of Scarborough, what form should it take? That's really the primary thing that we're looking at. Yeah, Lori, I don't, I, I guess I would, I'm not sure that in my mind that you can separate out um, because we're relying on, on a referendum. Um, and if we, if we're not cognizant of the, um, I mean, we, we will know what the cost is, but I mean, the numbers that were in here were in the like 35, the 35 million uh, range uh, that uh, I, I think we do have to be sensitive to that because we can come up with with the greatest 
plan, but if it's not going to be um, supported, I, I don't know. It, it almost seems like we've taken a year of everybody's time and just, I, I guess I would like to be a little more sensitive to it. I guess I view that as whoever is the recipient of this report, whether it's the council or another kill committee that is a building committee, right? This is, this is, I, I view this as a little bit more of a precursor to that analysis mm -hmm. and that discussion. That's more of a council and building committee discussion, I think. This is what makes the most sense in terms of what we have for needs and demands of the community. Sure, sure. But I, I, I go back to Barry Dunn's comment was uh, on the, the size of the pool. They were saying that the committee had recommended either 10 or 12 lanes, and they said that just doesn't make any sense. Right. Um, oh, totally agree. Totally agree. We need to get that type of stuff. So, yeah. I, so okay. I, I think sure. that's, oh, that's that's a cost awesome. thing. I mean, yes. if we had yeah. plenty of money, sure, let's let's make it. Let's make I it. I think this is not the most feasible and thought out. I think that you know, Karen and I kind of had this conversation last week, and Karen, you can chime any time. Is that you know, my question to Karen when she asked is that we've got the charge. And I, again, just kind of reiterate, Patrick, our job is to develop something under the best pretenses that we can. And then this report or our work goes to council to then decide when does it fit or doesn't, you know what I mean? Um, you know, but one of the things that, you know, building this out, the longer it goes, mm -hmm. the costs are going to change. And that's what happened in school, right? They look at all these reports and every time the cost kept going up and the, and the parameters changed with the demographic of the school system. And so that past data was just work that was never used because the population of the school changed, the growth size changed. So, you know, you've only got these couple, you know, windows to make things fit, to make a choice. And then after it, you can go back and review it. But again, that, that committee was looking at bringing in six or seven swim teams to make a regional pool. And that's why that got driven to, yeah. Well, and I think your question was a good one. Was I talking about initial or ongoing costs? And, and as part of the design process, I think it's really important that we place a priority on items that people want and can be financially responsible. Because how cool would that be if we could get as close to self-sustaining or even retiring debt service? That would be really cool. Um, so I think it is important to have that be a pretty important factor for us to consider what people want. Um, I don't want to forget the people online. Yeah. Um, I don't see any hands up, but I, oh, are we doing hands up if they want to speak? I hope so. Bill's got oh, finger sorry. up. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> I am Bill Dunneman. Uh, I haven't met several of you. I look forward to meeting you. Uh, I'm the library's representative. But I don't come with any sense of antagonism towards this project. I don't think it's competition for the library project that was defeated a year plus ago. Uh, my own sense or uh, viewpoint on community centers is I'm all in. I am totally in favor of the concepts that we're talking about introducing to this community. Uh, I think, as I understand it, Jean Marie can correct me if I'm wrong, this is a TIP sponsored project, that this will be available for tax incentive financing support. So that when we kind of say, how are we going to pay for an expensive project? And 35, 40 million isn't an expensive project in a town that has demonstrated uh, a willingness to push back. Uh, well, if projects are in this district, meaning the TIF district we're sitting in, 50% of the cost of a project anywhere else. So to Patrick's point, it starts to make financing less of a critical issue because I think we'll be able to convince the public that there's, your point, tremendous value in adding these services, tremendous value to the community. And it's not going to be expensive. I, I'm voting for the school. I think schools are the most important 
public thing you can provide. But at 150 million, I've got my doubts like a lot of other people do about whether this will be approved. We go forward 100 miles an hour, do our report. Uh, and I think at the end of it, we will get support from our community because they want the services and the services can be delivered at a cost that is significantly the tip monies. Jean Marie and I were on the council at the same time and Tom Hall comes to me and says, uh, there's this concept, tax incentive financing. Any of you here heard of it, and I'm a lawyer and I do a lot of municipal work. <laughs> and he said, uh, if we set it up now and the downs explodes like it has, uh, the amount of money that will be available to support the financing of capital projects is going to be startling. Uh, and so uh, if anyone listened to the report on the downs uh, last week, they say they're two years ahead of where they thought they'd be. The amount of money that will be available to support this under our TIP financing will allow people to say, I can have my cake and eat it too. I can have a really good constructive facility, something that will contribute to the town, but it's not gonna cost me a fortune to do it. The school and the library, they're not subject to that. They're, they're, those are tougher roads to hook, but, uh, but we can probably assume that if we do it right, design a facility that's popular, that grasps the people's vision of what they've always been saying they want in this community, then we'll have the support of the community. Uh, and while the school is going in November, I think we'll go in the next year, 14 months, one way or the other. I do believe that's, that's what this timeline will work out no matter what the school situation is. Good, not seeing any hands up. Um, good good background discussion on the uh, information that we had I, I to do look at. I want to inject one, one thing that has to do with the CEA at the NAMS. Um, just I pulled it up because I'm thinking, what did that say about the community center in it? Uh, and it does say under Section 8.15 Community Center Process, it says the town agrees to undertake a public process to define and refine elements across the community center. Such process to be completed no later than CEA year five, which is March 31st, 2024. Is the expectation of both parties and the developer will be a prominent participant in the process. The developer agrees to reserve land within the developer property for the inclusion of a suitable for a community center incorporated into the downtown area and identified with the approved master plan until March 31st, 2024. Following public process, parties may decide to commit to a new or amended credit enhancement agreement. And the only reason I bring this up is because I want to remind folks that that is in the CEA. March 31st is coming up. Rather than later. Um, but that being said, um, I also want to make sure that that taxpayers, my constituents, understand that it doesn't say the developer is going to pay for it. it. Doesn't say the developer is going to pay for the land. It doesn't say the developer is going to donate the land. It just says that they would agree to reserve land within the developer property. So that's out there too. That's my only point in bringing that up um, what is the date what is the significance of the date that's, uh, that's when the that's when the five year in this cea now the cea can be amended but it would take all parties to amend the, the date one of the issues and you you alluded to putting it here instead of um at the downs or it, you know if we look at other sites in the town um one of the big challenges previously was that it was attached to a hockey rink yeah so there was not, we just didn't have a lot of options. To, a that. commercial operation, basically. Yeah. Yeah, yeah I don't yeah. think this site here is, I mean, there's no way the site is large enough to support a community center with everything else going on here. I mean, there's a ton of activity on there. that parking lot on a Saturday and a Sunday is like, you're practically
physically park it on the street somewhere. That's yeah. what you want. You can't have you have the community center in there. It's, oh, you mean uh, having it on this on municipal this, campus? On this campus? Yes. Oh, it and wouldn't fit with a hockey rink. It, it, we couldn't. We yeah, literally we couldn't get it. the building here. Not even so, close. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but what my question about the significance of the date is they have to identify a, pro, a parcel that is going to be held in reserve by that date or I just don't know what the significance of that five year March 31st. Um, date. What happens if that comes? Yeah, Patrick, they have to, they have to, they have to, they have to right here. She's, was Karen? Is that you, Karen? She's frozen. Oh, uh -oh. yeah. I'm sorry, am I delaying? No, they have no to you're good that. now. Go ahead. Good. Okay, sorry. So that just means that, can you, I'm sorry, can you hear me? Yes. Okay, that just means that until March 24, they're obligate, ob obliged to hold land for us or right. identify it. And then, then they can do whatever they want with all the land and everything. Um, okay. But that's, again, we're not at the land part. Um, but so after after the end of m next March, they aren't an, under an obligation to an obligation identify and reserve the, uh, anything. This legal document, right. right? Gotcha. And my understanding from the presentation they gave last week is they already felt like they met that obligation because they went through the process with you with the edge. Now, I'm not, I'm I'm not, not sure that, that particular, but whatever. I would, think, I would think they would be still enthused about the idea of it. Uh, if you ask my brothers, I'd say right here on the municipal campus would be ideal. Uh, but uh, short of losing part of the on, park is placing a, it on the yeah. municipal campus is a difficult task. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Could you ask Tom just for clarification, possibly Todd, on that? Would you call the CEA March 31st date? And if that plays in our favor or against us in any way, just like to hear what he, his thoughts are. Okay. Yeah, he may be more aware. He's involved with the negotiator when it's been on the end. So, you know, we have very interesting discussions that went on. Okay. Um, all right, without objection, let's move on to item five on the agenda, which is discuss previous program data and discuss potential activities. And Todd, you want to guide us a little bit in what you found out? Yeah, so I sent everybody and then I made a copy for you. Um, um, I mean, it's nothing pretty, but it's the, um, yeah, sure, it's the three documents that we had in hand, uh, committee survey, uh, ad hoc 19 survey and then our master plan survey and so part of the homework assignment was to just look at the program spaces that were and so I just took them in order that they were prioritized in those three different documents um, uh, so the the 2019 ad hoc and the 20 to 23 parks and facility actually had people rank them in, as far as program spaces the townwide community survey, it was kind of a little a little different to pull out and I kind of categorized it different there. It showed um, level of emphasis that we should put on it, which was the top thing. Uh, and it showed the two big criteria that were the most important was fill facilities for indoor recreational use and for um, uh, gym, school gyms for recreation was, was important. Um, and then it showed just percentage and then community center was the highest priority. So that's that's not really the program piece, but just I wanted to share about gymnasiums and then the indoor space, which includes pools. Um, but if you look at either side of the spreadsheet, they're not too far off. So on the top in the town wide community survey in 21, the out of I don't know how many choices they had on question 24 you have listed there, but out of how many ever choices they had, 54% of the people said that the community center was the highest priority. Yes. Yes, that's amazing. I mean, sometimes when you have twenty choices, you might have the highest number be twelve or fifteen percent. Exactly. You know. Yeah. No. It was. It was. It was overwhelming. You know. And again, to Amelia's point earlier, though, it didn't say what it was going to cost the build and what, what was going to cost to go there. It was just. I think it was the data point to say, get to that point to tell us mm -hmm. what that is. Right. Right. Okay. 
So we have the aquatic facility. I'm looking at the left side with a rec pool, competition pool, therapy pool, multi-purpose gym, indoor walking track. So these are all the things that we've seen in just about every example that we've looked at, you know, either the prior committee or this one, where had some factor of those those three or four things in them. And then childcare, that's one I want to flush out, like how that how that all works. Like, you know, would would the would you call it the hub? Yeah. Would the hub be moved to this building potentially? Like that that idea of having that aftercare. Yeah. So just to answer that question as I'm sorry, I'm trying to get Amanda's video to work and I can't seem to get it to I think she has the ability to do that. Yeah, she needs to start a video. Okay. Um so Child care and child watch, one or two different things, right? Child watch, we kind of touched about is is a is a membership benefit or a way to get people into a building where I'm going to go take a I class. And I'll watch that's why my video is not on. Oh, there you go. Hi, Amanda. Um, uh, so that's what child watch is, right? You buy a pass, you pay a day fee to drop my child off while I go run a treadmill or take, a, take an aerobics class. Uh, child care is a little more complicated in the sense of, um, you know, what and where. Location is right now presently, you know, we have the three or four child care sites, Wentworth and three elementary schools, and we just received the kids at those locations and we've been doing that forever. Um, presently in the existing plan of the new school, all three elementary school sites would be in one building. So we, instead of receiving 40, 30, 50 in a, in a school, we'd get 120, you know, showing up into the facility at, if the new school is to be built. So that that's the majority of our child care and the Wentworth site wouldn't change. Um, you know, when you're talking about child care, any sort of child care in a community center, there's a couple of big factors. Um, and, and those are choices, again, to, to, to think about along the way. Are we not meeting the need? Is there an opportunity to, oh, she got it, um, an opportunity to meet the need? Um, and those are decisions to make. Uh, what are we displacing? You know, I know in my old facility, we had a, a gymnasium and half the side was for after school kids playing pickup and the other side was for childcare. So we lost half a gym to childcare. Um, and then, you know, another, another part is if it's not right next to a school, how do you get them there? You get transportation, you get all the other pieces. So there's a lot of kind of educational choices to make when you talk about adding childcare. Um, I, and then ultimately, because people say, can you add more people? Yeah. If you can get staff and that's the million dollar question right now for a lot of things. So, Right now, we're just keeping the model we have, or I should say the volume. It will be easier if we went in one school because I wouldn't need three site supervisors and three leads, you know, and then a counselor. I could, I could kind of cannibalize that staff a little bit. Um, so I think child care needs, would be a much bigger discussion. Um, child care is profitable um, as far as how we help offset our operation. Um, but I think it goes back to how much more square footage footage do you want to add to a building and what does that what does that mean? Because there are different things that need to go into play. Yeah, child care is such a problematic topic for us as a community center at our committee to talk about because it's presently really taken care of by the schools. The school the school. Now we don't know what's going to happen with the uh, consolidated school proposal in November, because if it passes, then it will represent a consolidation from all three of those elementary schools into one and built over the next three, four, five years. Uh, if it doesn't pass, then those three uh, neighborhood elementary schools remain uh, pivotal and well worth uh, to the uh, solution for uh, uh, after school care, uh, and we're all saying, we're what are we supposed to do? Are we supposed to make our plan based on an assumption that the school will pass or not pass? And we can't do either one. Uh, so I take that as kind of a a floater issue, uh, one that will come up for us at a later date because we'll still be meeting uh, two months from now. Well, we know what the outcome of the school is. Right. I, I think we, we certainly want to, you know, and I, and I appreciate the differentiation between child watch and child care. Um, the child watch service is 
probably something that we need to offer to be competitive. It's probably something that is an and ancillary you're service. Talking, to you're talking about center. a child watch space. You're talking about a, you know, a, a, a small space that has a separate restroom, you know, designed for littles to go. That's, it's not a, not even a quarter of this room probably, depending on where it was located in the building. So it's not a, you're not talking about an expensive place or a large spot. It's, and a limited, it's a revenue generator. limited duration. Yeah, obviously. And when you get through this process with UTIL, they'll kind of give you and some of these things we look at. This space is low cost to build, moderate revenue. This space is low cost to build, high revenue. This is the most expensive to build and high. Like they right. can, when you're trying to make those choices, that's how they should be breaking this out for you to be able to kind of make those like what's a value. Okay. Or value. So, regardless of which way the school goes, though, the before and after care isn't necessarily moving to the community center. No. And so, regarding the hub, we have another, like, I think it's like 18 months, our lease. And after that, we're at council approves that, not approves it. The owner could say they're selling the building. Yeah. We've only used child uh, hub as overflow child care during certain times of the year because transportation is an issue. We, we can't get buses to get the kids from site to site. So that's why I was mentioning child care of transportation. It becomes a challenge. Yeah. So, so, so if there's no consolidated school, the child care remains after free. Yes. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. And my work. And my work. Four sites, right? Yes. Sorry. Four schools. I'm just going down the list. Uh, Fitness space with group class space, multi-purpose space with kitchen, and we talked about that a little bit. Um, I don't know if it was after the meeting or before or during the meeting last week, but um, having some type of you know refrigeration might not be cooking facilities, but some type of you know community kitchen space is probably going to be integral, especially if we're going to be leasing out you know part of it for birthday parties and things like that. You have to have a place for ice cream or to store pizzas or whatever. Okay. You have to be something. Um, Multi-purpose space. Okay, then outdoor outdoor area with playground. We don't really talk about that at all yet. I, I would anticipate that that might not be part of this program, but so yeah. maybe, I'm, maybe I'm making an assumption I shouldn't. No, I don't think you are. I mean, I think those are those are choices when you decide how much space you have and then what the costs are. When, when they talk about outdoor space is that you know, if you were having a child watch or you were doing child care, you would want some fenced in area to be able to have the children go play safely and come back into that space. And so we could pull, excuse me, some some examples so people can kind of see what that looks like. But that all depends on the initial programs. So it's like what programs and then what you're trying to do. And then lastly, and, and where the cost comes in or the higher cost comes in, at what level do you want to provide that service? Are you just, you know, when you say child care watch, is it just a space where I could drop you off? It's like going to the elementary school and you're just playing the stuff that we have, or is it a space where they're going outside on a playground that could be open to the public during, you know, um, during the day as well and provide value to a membership? Again, I think Bill kind of said, a, said something that just resonated with me. It's like, you know, when I, my son played travel soccer, the best places, and I always paid more, was the place that had the amenities where I was warm. <laughs> I could sit and watch without being darted with a ball. You know what I mean? Those are valuable things to a parent that are sitting around. So those are choices that you'll have to make along the way. Um, yeah. What it's worth. Yeah, I think that's, so that's also, I mean, that also could be areas where we're activating it with events and functions, right? They're outdoor. Oh, absolutely. Or even playground. So, I mean, if we're trying to drive community engagement or trying to get everybody into a centralized location to congregate, um, then the community center would make a lot of sense for that. Yeah. Yeah, and the design, the layout, those type of things, how people move from those spaces where, you know, what they're connected to and how they get to it um, can really make a building feel bigger than it is. You know, with a, with good thought layout and what the what the intended use is. Yeah. Um, uh, rentable space we alluded to earlier, and then going on the more recent, so four years later, aquatics, lap pool, wellness, fitness, aquatic facility, leisure pool, uh, gym with walking track, multi-purpose flex space, arts, crafts, educational classes. Um, that gets into more or, or activities. Activities. Yep. That's yep. more activities. 
Um, Drop-in activity zone game room, which I would think that's more like a teen type place, like pool tables, ping pong tables. That was that definitely stuff. derived towards getting the teens. Okay. Yeah. It's more, more of a teen center type yeah. feel to it. Performance event space. So that got brought into where I think the conversation, and again, depending on what you um, to uh, we have a lot of requests for, uh, believe it or not, um, drama plays, um, but also for uh, speakers during the day, yeah. you know. Um, but I, I think, you know, I think people may have, and I think event space is, is it uh, something I can rent? Can I host an event there? Um, I think, I think, you know, they mix in with uh, um, athletic event space. Um, I'd have to dive a little deeper into that data to get that yeah I'd, I'd be curious to see if there's data to support that as part of the community yeah. center I'd, I'd be curious to see what the I can't remember what it's called what's the what's the former space in the high school called it's fine so what's their name for that auditorium Winslow Winslow Homer, oh, Homer think, auditorium, yeah, yes. Homer auditorium. Okay. Yeah. I'd be interested to see like how utilized that is it is it yeah. is it maxed out is it fully utilized yeah, like that would again I think that's definitely yeah. Yeah. We, we don't have uh, much data at the library on uh, performance space, but we've studied extensively community activity space. Meeting space. And, things and, like and it is enormous. Yeah. Uh, it really drove our need for uh, seeking an expansion approval, is that there is an unlimited number of activities that the community would like space for. Yeah. Uh, and God's hub proved that as soon as it just all of a sudden it's full of activity. The library is overrun by the number of, of activities that seek space. So uh, we should be providing for that and it should be flexible space, diverse, uh, because it's remarkable how it's uh, it's grown over the years. Absolutely remarkable. And then it's also a revenue generator, depending on your philosophy. Yeah, because we rent. Who and what you're charging for and how much, but... Um, you go, oh, what do you rent to? Condo associations, always looking for a place to have their annual meetings. It's it's remarkable how many uh, organizations are willing to pay for the space. We used to do a lot with businesses just because they couldn't get into a place at six in the morning for early, oh, right. for early you know, early events and trainings yeah. and socials. We used to do tons of those and, and birthday parties are huge. Yeah. 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 Uh, senior area, I think that goes without saying. That's mm -hmm. got to be on the table, no question. Um, meeting spaces, conference rooms, Bill's just talking about, and child care support. I guess maybe that's more child watch. Yeah, tinged. that was uh, they use I think just a general term because depending on, um, but more about yeah, well watch. Okay, all right. Um, so that's a good, very high level discussion and overview of the of the kind of the priority list that we have to work with. Um, and I know Todd went through quite a, a nice little presentation uh, slideshow last meeting, um, talking about some of those themes as well, which is helpful. Um, Todd, anything else on that item five we want to talk no, about at this I, point? No, I guess the only thing um, for for you, Teal, you know, are, are we comfortable with sharing? I mean, they have this data anyways, but they were looking for your kind of everything they get. They want to make sure that it's, you know, it's been re-looked at, not just something from a couple of years ago that before they go put pen to paper on anything. So. Um, yeah, I, th I think I guess the, the child care is, like Bill said, is kind of tabled yeah. pending yeah. whatever happens, right? Because there's just too many unknowns there and variables. And then I would question the performance space, like I mentioned. Okay. Um, anybody else have any heartburn about any of these other ones staying on the list for, for now? Mm -hmm. No, no good. No. Okay. Or do, or do you disagree with what I said? Speak, speak up. <laughs> You'll have plenty of opportunities to disagree with me later. I think performance space should just be mixed in with multi purpose collection space. Mm. It's, it's all separate. Probably so. Right, yeah. right. When I hear performance space, I'm thinking stage and, and, and oh, movable and space, and elevated and seating. Okay. And yeah. Yeah. Flex space where you're moving something in for it. Not, you know, it's, but you yeah. can have a wide open. Right. And looking at the pictures that UTIL provided for us, where like this wall, 
it's just a big yeah, open it up. glass wall that opens up to the outside. And now you've got like this beautiful indoor outdoor flex space that you can hold large events at. So I think utility will do, they should do a good job of incorporating kind of those two elements into, into one, but yeah. I agree. Yeah. Okay. Is there any, and I, and I know you don't have any of the data, but just to give them a kind of starting line on, on a pool. I think that's, the pool is, if, if this thing is going to go at all, yeah. the pool <laughs> or pools is the, and that's been number one across the board. Every time you say it, you know, it's the pool. And so. I think it needs to be both. Two pools. I agree. I, I agree. I agree. I mean, I mean, I, I mean that, so we're going through a similar process in, in Portland with our Doherty pool, outdoor pool, very limited in season there, but it's there's a debate on do you do is it competition level or is it more community community level? Yeah. So there's this discussion that's happening right now about how do we build, how do we construct this new pool? So from a community center perspective, we're gonna be holding competitions. There's gonna be a huge demand for that and it's going to overrun an aquatic center if you do not have secondary space to actually hold additional programming or activities that are happening in there because it, it will just be totally agree. like it, you have to have both of them. and it would be nice if we could understand what that sort of looks like are there examples of it yeah so um yeah, our that? email bill I sent, and I can sense I'll do I can send some more pool work stuff for you guys to kind of wrap your brain around. But but ultimately, you know, when you talk about multiple space, you know, the lap pool is the lap pool, then it's the amenities that go to the lap pool. How many lanes? Right. You know, how many people are you thinking about viewing the competition? Right. You know, I mean that kind of drives your seating and your revenue and you know, inside, outside, how does the building go? You know, when you talk about a rec pool, lap pool, I mean a rec pool therapy pool. You know the kind of two different elements, but really comes down to water much warmer. I was just gonna say, I right. well, you know, a lap pool they want to crank it out at 76, 75 degrees, and you know, and <laughs> at, you know, this is just my hope and wish that if this got forward, it would have a separate pump system because then that is a separate identity to that pool. You know, and then when you talk about a a rec therapy pool, it's it yeah. runs the gamut, right? You've seen. You know, splash pad slide. You've seen simple lazy edges, rivers, warm water yeah. pool, lazy river, like those type of things. Uh, you know, that's going to come down to choice and cost. So, so let me ask. Understand your statement. You're you're working on two pools. One pool. One pool. For what type, what community? For Portland. And it, it's it, an outdoor pool. Oh, an outdoor. Yeah, so it's very it's very limited in that season. Okay. But yeah, there's a high demand for competition level swimming there because there aren't the, there aren't many competition level pools, pools in the area. Yeah. So but it's outdoor. It's an outdoor pool and it's a community pool. So there's you know some things that need to be weighed on the city side on what yeah. what should be built. Priority. Yeah. Yeah. And who are we going to prioritize in the space? So. Alex, where is that? Remind me. Doherty. Yeah. Doherty Fields. It was the, it's called the Kiwanis. Oh, obviously, right. that's how I know what Kiwanis is. It's okay. currently Kiwanis, but yeah, when it's okay. getting rebuilt, it'll have a new name. So, yeah. Yeah. Um, the Todd, I think that there's enough evidence from all of the surveys and the prior work that was done that, that you know, the, the, the two pool model makes them the most sense, probably financially, also, just because the economies of scale with the systems you need to have to support that. and the revenue you can generate by um, having it be able, the two different modes be available. Yeah. 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 Okay. I completely okay. agree with that, with the two pools. There's no way you can do swim competitions and then also have it a therapy pool. They, no one would be able to do therapy in it. No, we had a multi-purpose pool, which had six lanes and then our rec pool was next to it. And one was always shut down. So you built something you only used half the time because there wasn't many hours you could run both at the same time just because of noise. And so um, mm -hmm. that goes back into design. And there's right. more qualified right. people in the bigger bigger footprint wall between, Walls, yeah. you know, again, people come out of the pool and they're hot versus parents sitting on the pool deck with littles in the water. So, um, yeah, there's, there's, there's some qualified. And, we have and I think that the warmer pool and in, having it be indoor with, you know, 
six, five, six months a year, you really seniors don't have really many options for right. outdoor, outdoor, like outdoor activities yeah, just like because of the weather. So <laughs> I would do it a swim up bar. <laughs> Definitely seniors, disabled people, for sure. Yeah, and it has to be a higher temperature, and the competition pool has to be a lower temperature yes. for the obvious reasons. So, I mean, it just makes all the sense in the world. And having the systems be separate for, let's not get into the discussion we had after the meeting last <laughs> time about the issues <laughs> around what necessitates a pool being closed. Right. Um, yeah. but, right. let's, but that's uh, money not happening. Right. 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 When right. you have to shut a pool down yeah. for maintenance or for other issues that we won't talk about right now, you should, you lose revenue. Yeah. So. Yeah. Um, so would any other, I mean, the no. walking track, there were all kinds of different yeah, options. We're just can... fitting that in to the rest of the design. That seems to be a pretty, pretty that easy. Pretty yeah. And a, and a pretty simple yeah. thing to integrate to yeah. whatever other program space yeah. that you have set up. Um, we talked about child walks. We talked about fitness space, um, you know, with, with equipment and I see the word gym on the other side over here. We heard pretty strongly from a lot of people in the previous committee that there's plenty of gyms and weightlifting and all that other stuff around town that didn't there wasn't necessarily as much of a need for that in a community center building. So right. I think we maybe could walk that line carefully. Yep, yeah, that, that was my reaction in the yep. in the very time they were talking about. I think a proposal was for four thousand square feet for. For the weight and yeah. fitness, and they thought that that was too small, and they were talking about bumping up to five thousand. And I was thinking about going the yeah. other way. Yeah. Uh, you know, just from a senior perspective, uh, my Medicare pays for my right. life prescription. Uh, I, I go to Foley's for nothing. Right. Yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah. And most centers, they'll do the silver sneakers, or they'll do the yeah. Medicare right. piece for the revenue. The one piece in the very down, they were, they were in their report talked about, and again choice um they were talking about a space where and they talked about it with activities too is that it's a revenue generator when you're trying to how much can you charge right. and what makes sense for people where most of the people that have been in community center fitness centers are literally people that have dropped their kids off in an activity you know what i mean so they may have a more comparable gym they do crossfit or something else but if they're paying for a family membership to go to the pool then there's a value if i can walk on a treadmill and you know what I mean? So it doesn't have to be a full week's fitness. Mm -hmm. So, but they yeah. can run through those exercises with right. you to give you cost okay. recovery. And right. if you yeah. don't have it, you charge this. If you do have it, charge this. And then you guys can decide it doesn't fit the model or it, you know, it makes sense revenue wise. Or you do some sort of a circuit that's throughout the building. But yeah, they'll have to run in different parts yeah. of the building. Yeah. I mean, why not? Then when we did the 2000, that 18 report, yeah. 2019. Yeah. <clears throat> there was some pushback from Old. the uh, Old. Yeah. Oh, yeah. and next gen. I mean, I personally do not want to see us really competing head on head with businesses that put their heart and soul into yeah. their facilities. Yeah. I just, uh, that would kill me to do no. it. So I, <laughs> I would prefer to see us where they have a strong presence and multiple programs were described in the paperwork as to how you can access those facilities. Yeah. I would just soon stay away from that. Right. We have beautiful mm -hmm. gyms. You just mentioned a couple of them. We have a gorgeous, like state-of-the-art rock climbing gym in town. Like we don't right. need to put rock climbing in this community center. You know, mm -hmm. I mean, there's just right. let's yeah. let's fill the needs that we have, or the, let's let's fill the voids, I should say, exactly. where where are where there are gaps in the town, and not just the town, but maybe the towns around here. Too. I really well. like the picture um, that Todd showed us yesterday or or last week. I, I did watch the meeting, even though I wasn't there, uh, of the walking track that incorporated right. different stations. Yeah. Um, I, I don't know that there's very much of that in and around Scarborough. Um, not but, indoor. I mean, people go to the not mall. Not indoor. Right. Right. And it's I not, can, doesn't exist on, uh, indoors. No. Right. And I can think of a lot of senior communities, uh, including the one I, I work at, that would uh, bus residents there to walk it every day. Yeah. Mm -hmm. could, it, could it be, I mean, we're talking about a wellness, fitness, wellness space is one of the higher priorities. Could it be more of a, a leased space of like a physical therapy 
person more senior oriented. Yeah, or it could be a space where it's you go after one of the examples that when I went to my conference, one of the examples was it was an entry level fitness. It was like you know dumbbells and you know just kind of yeah. base level, but it was run by a local gym. It was oh, a satellite right. space for them, so they were. It was an extension of their business, and they were doing kind of low level. One actually had an example that there was a lease space for a physical therapist that they took their clients there sure. right. to do basic stuff. And then once they got to a certain point, they went to the gym. gym. They go over they to go, the It's like karate, right? If we were to do karate, we're doing basic and karate classes. You want to do that next? You go to you go to a private dojo. You know, right. That next level. It's like tasters, right? You give them, right. yeah. you know. Exposure. Uh, exposure at cheap, low prices. Without the intimidation of a right. high end place. A high end place you yeah. walk in and you know, you're, 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 so or is it like team oriented too? I mean, we have so many athletic teams around the area where they want to do like team training sessions where you could do like yeah. small group sessions to teach your kids how to properly train for their sport or activity, and then you can go use the gym or you can go use the courts or whatever it is and kind of move them around into that mm -hmm. to that next level type of thing. I'll do they that. have a gym? At the high school, they do. I was going to ask for the football. It's it's oh, pretty, it's yeah, it's it's pretty pretty complex. I mean, it's downstairs, downstairs. It's on downstairs. the lower level, lower level, lower so the back level. Yeah, yeah. 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 If, if it's all right with you, I'll add that to the kind of the same childcare list. You know what I mean? Like, what does mm -hmm. that mean? Mm -hmm. You know, because I think that's the, you know, and I'm assuming I I when I see this flex space, I think yoga. Right. Pilates, yeah, Zumba, yeah. whatever, whatever right. the thing is, you it's know, square nowadays. footage that you can do classes in. But if you wanted to have childcare or a birthday party in it or a meeting, it, you know, it's got a rubber space. floor that you can clean up easy, you can yeah. clean up easy, yeah. and you know, classes. We've a lot of, we've had a lot of dance studios and cheerleading asking for practice space. Oh, right. Okay. You know what I mean? So okay. I think you know, yeah. it's not part of yeah. their scope, but I think if we cut down this road, you could probably put the you know, some pretty good potential lease spaces out there for people that are hurting mm -hmm. find space. I'm almost hesitant to even bring this up, but tennis, pickleball. <laughs> so, so two different two different questions. Yeah. Rooftop pickleball. So, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Pickleball is gym floor, you know, hard hard gym floor. Yeah. You know, pickleball, depending on the size of it, is how many courts you can have, that can be integrated into a regular basketball court. Right. And again, we touched a little bit about programming times last meeting, but you know, before school, during school, after school, and evenings, you know, and so pickleball is really a during school driven sport most of the time for, for large groups, large hours. And that's kind of what we did. 9 to 11, that was our pickleball time. And it was still stuff at night, but it may only be two of the courts, not eight courts, you know. It could be a huge revenue source for the community center if you line a multi like a multi or multiple courts, basketball courts with like six pickleball courts. You could have senior groups or just group retirement age folks in there every morning from nine to 11, nine to 12 playing pickleball at a time when you are, you just have such light. Those you know, courts would be empty exactly otherwise. Right? Empty. I mean, it's just, Interesting. it's yeah. incredibly popular at that time of the we day. People travel all over in the winter coast region. Yeah. So Even, talk now, in, in that light, I, I have a question. I, I realize it's a head of, but the three primary schools yep. that all have gymnasiums, cafeterias, cafeterias the meeting combo, rooms. Yep, they're all combos. They're all, yeah, know. they don't have gyms. They're, they're cafeterias. Gym, cafeterias. Well, but I mean, I mean, and Space. thinking about if you're looking, if, if those become available and you're looking for a pickleball, uh, that Use. That that's a that's a possibility. Of, yep. um, I, I I'm particularly interested in if the school goes ahead that we utilize those right. three little schools because oh. they have a I mean like a repurpose situation exactly right and yeah. they have a lot yeah. of I mean what are you going to do with them if you don't if you don't reuse yeah it? that's definitely a, that's, that's a November and beyond, beyond discussion but that's definitely yeah. on the table what but happens some of these things? some yeah. of these. Uh, in thinking about the the the, the pickleball players, um, they could easily. Okay, we're going to the Blue Point right. School. Right. Uh, the only or, the only thing to be thinking about, and it's down the road, is, and it's the same model the school is using. You're bringing these three buildings together, is operations yeah. and staff. You right. Know, I mean, people keep saying, "Oh, we're going to make one a senior center, one activities." 
but you got to keep the building running and you got to put people into management. Right. So now your 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 span of control so, just went. But if you could make them a revenue source that would support those big buildings, those other yeah. uh, custodial needs and heat. Well, some of the flats that have come through the council are um, school administrative offices. They wouldn't be in town hall, they could be in one of those buildings potentially. Um, pre K. This pre-K is coming down from the state. You know, that could be one of those buildings. You know, so they're there's they, sure. they, they, they all have all the playgrounds and right. And uh, yeah, I, I, I don't know that that's necessarily part of the charge of this committee, but right. if yeah. there are some other sure. wishes yep. that make sense, yeah, absolutely. Okay, and I, and I and I would assume tennis is kind of in the same conversation with the gym and the rock climbing and that yeah, kind of stuff. There are kind of like facilities. Lot, you're talking yeah. a much larger different. facility. Yeah. That's so that's pretty specific to. So that's off our off our yeah, vision board at this, this point. Yeah. Um, okay, I want to <laughs> keep us. You got to have eight to ten. Courses. I want to keep us going to try to stay on track here. So item six, I I think I had you add this on just site yeah. visits. I, I just wanted to give Todd a charge and maybe get some feedback from you guys on what you think about this about finding maybe two to four sites within an hour to an hour and a half drive that we could maybe schedule a, an a, an a weekend afternoon of field field uh, trip to to just actually lay eyes on some of these facilities. Um, so Todd, you want to talk about that just for a minute? Yeah, I can I can gather um, knowing the, the now that we're kind of okay with this kind of programming priority based on the data we have, I can try to find facilities to take a look at. Um, you know, and um, you know, there's there's a there's only a few centers that have this sort of thing in the in in Maine. There's not a lot of them. You know what I mean? So we may have to go south. You're talking my little Wiscasset Center, Booth Bay, Bangor. Um, you know, those are really the ones that have a lot of these amenities in different styles. Um, but you could we could go south and look at um, um, drawing a blank Portsmouth. Um, Bedford Math, there's, there's some couple in there that have different, um, I really want you to look at the different amenities of a facility, so it may be something that we go and look at, okay, if the if the number one thing is pools, to learn about pools and be able to chat with those those folks about what they like or don't like, what doesn't work, because, you know, and the one thing I learned when I did my, my conference thing is we went in, the engineers, the designers, they told you all this, we went and saw the building and the operator person's like, I hate that. <laughs> <laughs> it was a good thought, but yes. the systems didn't connect, or you know, this this little notch in the room was echo. You know, just it's like talk. You want to know about a school? You go talk to the administrative system, so the custodians. Mm -hmm. And so having that opportunity, I think, is huge when you have to make choices. So um, How about colleges, are there any like field houses that we that could be a, that we can kind of compare to what we're looking at? I know they might not have pools necessarily, but thinking about Biddeford and U R U N E S, yep. you know, massive field house with yep. That large gym space, a lot of flex conference room space. They have the yep. skating rink, but you know, is there a way that we can kind of? Yep, I can look at colleges too, as far as some of those amenities hmm. that are out there. Just because again, there's a million different designs of buildings. Right. Colby's the other real new Colby's one. Right, right. Beautiful, beautiful. Even Bowden's a little older, but you walk yeah. in, you've got the pool and the viewing, mm -hmm. and then you've got that open kind of court space with their yeah. fitness centers off the sides. St. Joe's, for that matter. And oh, say goes that, right. uh, their aquatic centers yep. nice one pool. Yep. Yep. Um, so I'll, I'll put a list together for you guys. So that's just a yep, I'll work on, yeah, on the horizon. Um so let's talk about uh, item seven date and schedule. So the I don't know, I don't think everybody got this, but the no, I just gave it to you. everybody gave uh, their results back, and I'm not sure where the numbers come from because we don't have 29 people in the committee, but however this worked out <laughs> for the th Thursdays at seven was the number one choice. Thursdays at six was number two. Wednesdays at seven was number three. And then it was tied between Wednesdays at six and Mondays at seven for the fourth slot. Two, three, four, yeah. Um, I was one of the people who said Mondays at seven because this is perfect for me, but I'm, I'm open to whatever the will of the group is. is I don't know if there's numbers. So uh, roughly a third more people were interested in Thursdays at seven as opposed to Mondays at seven, but we're, we're one of the other days or times. So it looks like Thursdays at seven 
Is, it, it's a total what do you mean? is there anybody who's a voting member of the committee that that is a total non-starter for them? Thursdays at seven. Is that every other week? Every other week is what we're thinking for, for now. now. Yes. Yeah. So the next one would be, I guess, the twelfth of October. Yeah, that's candidates night. So I don't know. Don't worry about me. Karen, you here. <laughs> The same people that voted for Thursdays at seven are going to have to go out and vote for Jean Marie, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> because there's 29, 29 of the eight of us voted for that one. Well, technically it would be the fifth, I guess. Okay, if we're going to, but I was thinking that this this meeting satisfies this week yeah, yeah. and I was going to go two weeks beyond this week. So that'd be the 12th. Yeah, that'd be the 12th. Sounds good. I can't do the fifth either. I can barely do the twelfth. I think my plane lands at eleven. I was going to say eleventh. Yeah, the eleventh at midnight. I think oh, I get geez. back. Um, and I think I already have a game that night on the twelfth, actually. But I'll have to cancel it if that's the case. Um, so that would put us the twelfth at twenty-six. Just just looked out a little bit. Yeah, the, the ninth. Do we avoid Thanksgiving? No. So we'd have to do something there, skip maybe three Monday. weeks there, or go to a Monday. Go to the 20th that week? 11 20. What did you say in November? I'm sorry. Nine. Uh, I got 10 12, 10 26, 11 9, 11 20. And then we'd go 12 7. Am I doing the math right there? Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's right. 12 7, then 12 21. And I think we agreed to uh, perfectly miss Christmas and New Year. Yeah. And, and then 11, 1, 4, and then yeah. carry on after that. We can figure figure it out. That gives us six or eight days. From your deal. They wanted to know your frequency and and uh, time frame, and then they would kind of put the stuff together for you. So you got those? Yep, I got those okay. dates. Do you find it like something about their scope or? Yep, I emailed that. There's, there's a link in that email. Uh, I didn't see that either. I did not. I don't know how I missed all that stuff. I thought the rest of it. Unfortunately, I sent three emails. Okay. I'll look. Um, again. Sure. I mean, I, I'm not making excuses, sure. I'm sure. Yeah, I will. Uh, and is it going to be. How's the. The web page for the on the town website for this group. Yeah, all all that stuff. They were just finishing that up. They all that stuff is on there, it's on the website. It is all there. Resources. So Could you maybe just links. do we have what is that? How do I find that? So yeah. So if you go to the home page of yeah. the website, and right in the middle is a bunch of blocks and what it says projects. Okay. So you click on that project link, and then there's a bunch of project hot buttons, and the community center have one. Um, okay. Check that out. Yeah, yeah, it came on set, uh, 9 18. I sent that one. Did you say the 26 months area? 10 25. Uh, what time? 35. Yeah, I might send it on the email. I got 10, yeah, 10 12, 10 26. I'm talking to send an email out yeah, anyway. Yeah. 11 9, and then we jump to uh, the Monday of Thanksgiving week. So that's 11 20. The rest of these are Thursdays, and then do we go back to Thursdays 12 7, 12 21, 1 4? Yeah, I'll see, I'll see the list in the middle. and all at 7 p.m., correct? That's what yes, that's good. Uh, all right, next agenda items. I think we just, I think we really need to get the meeting schedule and the feedback on the um, programs and activities to yeah. UTL and, and have them kind of give us some more feedback yeah. on what they want us to start with. Yeah, at. they're going to, I'll get that to them tomorrow morning. The one thing that they um, asked to consider um, for you guys to be thinking about, and it can be on your next agenda, mm -hmm. is uh, kind of the conversation around location. What are the criteria that you want to look at sites, you know what I mean, um, for? Um, the school had a bunch when they did their list of, of criteria and, you know, uh, to be able to, when you get a piece of property to you know weigh that against um so it, is it premature to be talking about location at this point because we don't know what the square foot of the building is or what well, what we're kind of talking about yet so when you talk about these top couple amenities you know and you can see in a lot of the previous well you're probably depending on how big and what the other stuff is any building that's probably between 
you know, 40 and 70,000 square feet, depending on design, you're probably talking about, you know, four to six acres of property. You know, but then it also depends on what it's next to. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? If you're talking about more of an event center, that means more parking. You know what I mean? If you're talking about, or if it's, you know, if it was on campus, you would have the other big parking lots when you have non-use. So depending on where it is and um, size, the other things in the criteria are, um, you know, availability, cost, you know, those are type things, location, size, um, you know, for me, and I'm always thinking about to the question about how do you get things passed? You know, is there a piece of property in town that uh, hits some of the other things that were identified in the master plan or some of the, you know, goals of council? You know, is there, you know, if we needed six acres, you know, is there a parcel that has some conservation? Could we have the, the town give us what the town owns? <laughs> Not much. I mean, I don't know. Do we own the Oak Hill School still? That property? I know mm -hmm. we the, the town still owns that property, yeah, that land, right? Still, yeah. Uh, yeah. yeah. Garwin, the Oak Hill, the yeah, old Oak Hill School. On Garwin, on Black Point. Yeah. We just, yeah, we own that one, and that's on a, it's a five year lease with the years notice for. And is that in that window, four to six acres? I don't know how big that is. I, no, I don't think that's. I, I, don't, know know about, I don't know about four to six, but it's a pretty good sign of the, the play field parking lot behind it. Yeah, there's, oh, right. there's a pretty good yeah. size. Yeah. I can look at that there. I mean, I think that there's. I'm just. I did put that as yeah. an example of. Right. Yeah. I would like to see a list of what the town owns today. Yep. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. So, list of existing properties owned. And I would, is, and maybe include the four, the three primary schools in that list as potential sites if if they meet the criteria. Or if they even if they don't, let's find out. Let's, yeah. we, we need to be. I think we need to be able to tell the public. We look at what oh, the town, yeah, what the town means. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. And that's my list. No, I'm trying to think. Um, and yeah, then we, we have, can. We have a pretty good list. Well, GIS, you community services. With GIS and the work that the land trust has done, and yeah. Yeah, as far as different parcels. Yeah. Right. The Beatridge site. Yeah. That's later to the utilities. What did you say? The utilities, the utilities is, no, is the hardest part about that. Yeah, there's no sewer over there. It's all well and septic. And the town owns land adjacent to that too. The old, yeah, the old, the old I don't know if you use that word anymore. Yeah. The old transfer, <laughs> transfer site. Yeah. yeah. Um, but there's, I mean, there's in the town owns land off of, uh, you know, down at Pine Point across the street from, from the Blue Point School. There's a pretty good size piece of land over there that was used for when they were building the turnpike in the 50s. No, it's off of Jasper Street, at the end of Jasper Street, I think uh, it is. I mean, so there's, there's, I mean, there are, I mean, I'm an Atlanta sport, so I know yeah, we have right, looked at everything. Yeah, right. You know? We're going to have an engineering firm do an analysis. So part of their, their scope of work is to help us select a parcel that meets, you know, they'll come back and say, based on what you're talking about, you need a minimal of, and then does that parcel that meet that? That's Weston Sampson, right? Yes. yes. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So, God, maybe uh, the consolidated schools looked at. <clears throat> yeah, what uh, we and, looked at, and the libraries looked at alternative sites. Yeah. Why don't you ask Nancy to give you the data on that <clears throat> and ask the schools? Right. That way, at least <clears throat> we Nancy, have the benefit. Nancy retired. Of, not yet. <laughs> not yet. Yeah. It's got to be more than eight. It's got a satellite office. <laughs> that that would help us because they scour it. Yeah. 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 We've got a lot of yes. uh, yeah. Because, and I guess what we'd like to do is have the people who are going to analyze this for us <clears throat> identify anything on the municipal campus that would work. Yeah. I think we did yeah. that. We did. I don't think we found anything. I mean, we identified, I think, the the uh, the outdoor hockey rink area mm -hmm. and the and the wetlands around that. It's going to have to be the wetlands. It would have to be mitigated, but the town street. the town has other properties in town that could be used for mitigation too. Right. Exactly. But, yeah. I think that's where we figured out it. Yeah. Or it would have to be the wetland mitigation and take the ice rink, and basketball courts, and part of the parking lot. Right. 
was. That's what it was. Yeah, you can do that, but where are you going to put everybody? Where are you going to park everybody? That's, just, that's the biggest problem. We're going to have a there. parking garage. <laughs> there you go. Nine <laughs> million dollars <laughs> later. I know. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. All right. Before we digress too much, is there anything else anybody would like to see on the next agenda? As a talking point or as an issue to raise, I think we got a pretty good idea. Todd and I can work together to set that. If you have, if something pops out at you, just shoot Todd and I an email, and we'll make sure it gets on there. And Bill, I believe, just made eye contact with me. There's a motion to adjourn. A second, all in favor? Aye. Meeting adjourned. Eight twenty-three. Thank you all.